What's next for Spider-Man? Or more specifically, Tom Holland's Spider-Man. Although I will say with all the money that No Way Home is making, and it's a lot of money, don't be surprised if Andrew Garfield does become the Sony vs. Spider-Man, which we've been speculating. Fans ate him up! Sorry, Toby, you didn't bring your A-game. Also, Toby took so long to sign, a lot of his stuff was added at the last minute and sometimes was shot separately, which is why I think some of it comes across a bit more awkward than Andrew's. Uh, and also, a live-action Miles Morales sooner rather than later. Did your audience react like mine when Jamie Foxx, uh, you know, gave him a bit of a shout-out? Especially considering how diverse the audience is for No Way Home. Very diverse uh, numbers across the board. That's so important for a movie these days. Who shows up? Uh, Spider-Man movies are really the only Sony movies that make any money, certainly the most money, and the MCU has shown that fans can handle a lot of content from a single franchise. Clearly, Sony's focus on Spider-Villains instead of heroes has been the wrong approach. And I think, really, wow, the appetite for Andrew Garfield in particular is impressive. You know, Sony felt that that had hit a, had hit a dead end. They didn't even bother giving him a third movie. So that I, one of the biggest things I see coming out of the conversation here is give us Spider-Man 3 for Andrew Garfield. And Spider-Man 3s, by the way, are no longer, no longer jinxed. <laughs> How many of these movies, by the way, there will be multiverse stories across the Spider-Verse, part one and two are multiverse films. Perhaps Sony can get several universes going a live action Tom Holland, live action Andrew Garfield, animated Miles, maybe Toby is the father of Mayday Parker and another. I would love to see that. With occasional Avengers type Spider-Verse crossovers every few years, right? An animated Miles swings in cool world style, right? Ha huh, ha. Huh? Can Sony build a Spider-Verse really kind of like a, a mini MCU? They, I mean, MCU has perhaps too many things to cover, but I, I can see it. And I can certainly see the motivation with all the money that's being made. All right, but in this video, we're gonna talk about the first end credit scene, as well as the ending of the film, and what we might see in the next Tom Holland Spider-Man movie. He hasn't signed for it just yet. Amy Pascal says she wants to do another trilogy. And since he's not signed for it, he's gonna make so much money. He's gonna get such a sweet deal. Ask for points, Tom, ask for points. All right, so anyway, if you don't know what points are, that means points off the top of the gross. That's stuff like, um, uh, Robert Downey Jr. gets that, he got that, and it made him so much money. All right, so anyway, speaking of that end credit scene, clearly this was a last minute addition to both Venom 2 and Spider-Man No Way Home, and Tom Hardy crossing over to Tom Holland's universe uh, to both films is an end credit scenes only. You know, it's not, so I don't think it was planned in advance at all. I think they came, Carly came up with this idea like about maybe, a month or so before Venom 2 came out, and they probably shot those two end credit scenes the same day because they take place at the same location, uh, a hotel, you know, day and night. So you can do that really quick with Tom Hardy and turn uh, and turn around. And because of COVID, I think that's uh, I think the speed at which it was done, the last minute quality of it, and also because of COVID, that's why you don't really see him interact with anyone except that bartender. Did you think that bartender looked familiar? I'll tell you who he was. He's Danny Rojas from Ted Lasso, and he was fantastic. He held his own opposite Tom Hardy, not even as another Marvel character, just as a cool guy. I thought he was excellent. That should lead to more work for Danny Rojas. I love seeing the Ted Lasso people get more work other places, because they seem like they're all such new discoveries outside of... Um, Jason Sudeikis, they just sew those characters to us. But it's so fun to see Hollywood recognize them and put them in other things. Uh, that's so great. All right, so anyway, Danny Rojas. All right, so yes, there's, uh, so, but Tom Holland, while his time in the MCU was very brief, he had an important task, and that was to drop off some symbiote. <laughs> Yes, there's a dollop of the symbiote in the MCU now. Just a dollop, but that's enough. And I'd say that Tom Holland's Peter Parker is in a pretty dark place right now and has no Stark tech to back him up either. So he might be ready for a new crutch, an alien one. Too bad Tobey Maguire's Peter Parker didn't tell him more about that time he fought an alien, right? It was so jokey. He could have used some more information, but that's okay, because then we wouldn't be able to have this movie. All right. If they ever do a how it should have ended, they could fix that. Where <laughs> Toby McGuire is like, don't touch any alien black goo. And Tom Holland's like, got it. All right, so Peter Parker, though, already has a brand new suit that, with shiny reflective blue material, which I thought was such a great choice. I would love to see Tom Holland's Peter Parker at the fabric store. That was a great choice. The way it caught the lights of the city at night as he swung and swung through it. 
That was just so cool. I was like, that's a great choice. I mean, it's fantastic. And it's not only does he look great, but thematically, it's very important that Tom Holland's Peter Parker finally made his own professional Spidey suit. Because remember, up until now, they've all been gifts from Tony Stark. So, all right, so yes, let's break down the ending scenes, right? So Peter Parker is alone. Not a single person in the world literally knows who he is. With Happy not knowing who he is, it may's grave as a spine-chilling test. I thought that was excellent. Now, here are some questions. Would a Tony Stark AI formulated before the spell know who Peter Parker is? Is uh, I mean, is I, I, I would think the technology is affected because Peter Parker has to get a GED because he's no longer in his school system, it seems. So... I'm not sure, but that could be a way around it. Also, I'm sure any other practitioners of the mystical arts, like Wanda, would at least sense that something was amiss with Peter. They're like, you're a blank spot for me, but I get the feeling you're not supposed to be, right? And maybe Madam Web. A lot of you were like, where's Madam Web? If there's a multiverse of Spider-Man, if there's a Spider-Verse. Well, Madam Web, she, since she's outside of everything, she's like the TVA, by the way, for Spider-Verse. Maybe she would know who he was. All right, but anyway. This spell of Doctor Strange's is actually a perfect way to soft reboot Tom Holland's Peter Parker and make him less reliant on the MCU storylines and more Spider-Man centric going forward, which I think is clearly what the audience wants, which is funny because Tom Holland's Peter Parker has been extremely popular in the Avengers movies. What's the most famous blip moment when he blips in front of Tony Stark, right? I mean, the whole point of this of this deal between Sony and Marvel was to get Spider-Man into the MCU movies, but he's been in them. Perhaps Disney going forward will settle for a cut of the box office, which they're getting because they put up some of the cash, and then also the ability to use Spider-Man in their theme parks, etc., going forward on their cruise ships, you know, the whole Disney empire. What do you think? We're, I kind of like the idea of Spider-Man going off on his own for a while because I, one of the things I liked the most about No Way Home was that it felt like a Spider-Man comic. It felt just like the character should, which is great. All right, so on that note, Tom Holland's Peter Parker is finally starting to look a lot more like the adult Peter Parker from the comics. He's alone. He's, you know, working all by himself, scraping by. He lives in a crappy New York apartment that's actually pretty darn nice. <laughs> Who's, how's he paying for that? It's huge by New York apartment standards. And the final scene in the movie of him leaping out the window with the sewing machine and the fabric in the foreground and then swinging over Rockefeller Center's Christmas tree and ice rink, that was so spidey. It was so amazing. And it was so reminiscent of the fantastic ending scenes of the previous Spider-Man movies where he's swinging over the city. It just felt so much like Spider-Man in the movies, previous movies, and in the comics. It was just really great. Spider-Man is such a popular character. He can have his own thing with only occasionally crossing over to the MCU. Now, as for our other Spider-Man cast members, who are also, I think, very important to the success of these new movies, Aunt May is dead. Peter's never been without an Aunt May, at least in any of his major storylines, so that'll be interesting. But Feast lives on! And to remember his aunt and honor her life's work and what she stood for, I think there's a very strong chance Peter will continue to be involved with Feast, so that means enter Mr. Negative, which would fit very nicely with the dark storyline that Peter's headed towards, and also black and white color scheme of Venom is carried over with Mr. Negative. Black Cat 2, we're getting to that! What if they call the new one Spider-Man, black and white? Oh, I love it! And while they don't know who Peter Parker is, MJ, Ned, and Flash are all headed together to MIT. That's crazy that they all got into MIT from the same school. That's an excellent high school. Which, of course, is Tony Stark's alma mater and where Stark Enterprises is still heavily involved with scholarships, etc. Will they bring about his AI there? <laughs> that would be hilarious. And let MJ do it. Now, remember all the jokes in No Way Home about scientists having accidents in labs? Will Ned have an accident that leads to him becoming Hobgoblin like in the comics? Maybe he'll want to have it. Well, he doesn't remember that whole adventure. But anyway, he did get a warning about the, 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 how often Peter Parker's best friend turns on him in other universes. And even though he swore he wouldn't do it, can he fight fate? And with his new magic abilities, Ned's Hobgoblin could be a serious foe as he knows magic and math, right? Remember, math is how Peter Parker, or science, uh, how Peter Parker, this Peter Parker, was able to defeat Doctor Strange in No Way Home. And what would happen with MJ? Some really interesting things could be done with her character before she eventually remembers who Tom Holland's Peter Parker is and they get back together. I think the odds are very strong, because of course Peter remembers them, that when he has a problem with the symbiote, when he realizes that the symbiote is not all that great, he swings over to MIT to get MJ and Ned's help, at least MJ's. And will the symbiote jump to a new MCU Eddie Brock? Will it jump to MJ or Ned, right? Flash? Will Eddie Brock 
also go to MIT? Everyone, everyone's going to MIT, right? Uh, MIT's like, this is the best. I mean, I wonder if MIT applications are up. But anyway, or could Ned somehow, using his magic, bring Tom Hardy over from back from the Spider-Verse? And before Peter Parker and MJ get back together, Black Cat. This is a perfect opportunity for her. She not only fits with the black and white color motif, but I think it would be interesting to have, she would be a great love interest for this darker, more adult chapter of his life, right? Let Tom Holland's Peter Parker go out and play the field a little bit before he settles down with uh, Zendaya's MJ. So, but I still want MJ in the movie. I really want to see what she does at uh, MIT. I think that's so exciting for her character. So what do you think is, maybe she and Ned and Flash could start up a lab. Maybe they could start up Horizon Labs, right? Uh, although Horizon Labs, of course, is already over in the Morbius movie. But, you know, it's a multiverse. Horizon's everywhere. So what do you think is next for Tom Holland's Peter Parker? And what would you like to be next for MJ, for Ned, for Venom, and for Sony's Spider-Verse, live action and animated? A lot of, a lot of possibilities. And I think Sony's like, we're going to do them all because you guys want to see them all. And now we can. All right, share those thoughts down below, subscribe today, and of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.